Good evening and welcome to Collector Cars. I'm Lance, your host. Well, with me in the studio, we've given Bill and Bill the night off. They're probably text messaging each other. That's what they were doing on the show last week. Bill and Bill have the night off because we have a special guest with us tonight, Mr. Don Vicoli. How you doing? Doing great, Lance. Good to see you again. All right. And I don't, nothing special, but Mark, Petty. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a special guest and a non-special guest. That's right. I'm non-special. That's right. <laughs> Mark got the call today. I said, uh, Bill's not feeling good. His wife's not feeling good. And Trier's got the sniffles. And Bruce Olmstead is sick. He said, yeah. I said, well, I need somebody on the show. You went, <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> But we got him up here. He's uh, always readily available. Yep. Uh, we got some neat stuff tonight because we're going to talk about, if you notice the shirt, huh? I got to tell you, Debbie and Barry bought this shirt for me two years ago. The closest I could get the buttons each side was one here and one here. There was this big gap in the middle. I couldn't even get it closed. 35 pounds later, All right. I'm in my shirt. And I'm going to try to wear it the day of the show so that uh, Barry will wear his. I'll wear mine, father and son shirts. <laughs> <laughs> you notice I didn't specify who was who. No. Yep. Okay, I, I'm being nice. I don't know. Oh, I, I think do, you implied I it. I look presidential. <laughs> look at this. Look at this. It looks like the presidential seal behind my head there. I love that. Um, anyway, we're, we're playing with the monitor here. We've got coming up the uh, Honor Flight Show. Now, this is a program you've been involved in for... Going, uh, well, it's two years. Uh, November okay. 2007, we became a nonprofit entity in the state of Florida. Cool. Um, for the purpose of, as uh, if your viewers do not know what Honor Flight is, Honor Flight was um, the brainchild of a retired Air Force captain who was a physician's assistant mm -hmm. who, after he retired, w worked at a VA clinic in Springfield, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Of course, most of his patients were in their 80s and 90s, World War II veterans. Right. Right after they dedicated the World War II memorial, Earl asked his patients if they thought they'd get to see the memorial. And obviously, most of them said no. I mean, either they couldn't make the trip themselves or for monetary reasons. Right. So I think Lance was an enlisted guy before he became an officer because he's kind of cagey like us enlisted guys are. Mm -hmm. um, his dad was a Vietnam vet okay. and he went to dad one day. Earl had a private pilot's license. Mm -hmm. He goes to dad one day and said, dad, I got a great idea. Why don't you and I split the cost to rent a small plane? I'll fly you to Washington, D.C. You can visit your memorial and I'll get some flight time. There Dad thought that was a great idea. Oh, by the way, do you mind if we take two World War II vets with us? That was the That's beginning cool. of Honor Flight. There you go. The following month, Earl goes to his Air Force Pilots Club meeting, and the following month, 12 small airplanes Show head it. to Washington, D.C. Is that is that, cool. that if that's a cool, yeah. that's like that's like the story of how what, like Devereaux started with mm -hmm. with Maurice and and um, uh, Tom Kaiser with a few cars in the yard watching a football game one year and bang it's turned into a 1,200 car for 1,300 car show here you go yeah. that's yeah. a beautiful thing well and now you're flying last year you had 76 yes 76 in September 2009 basically renting a big commercial type airliner now yes we. Last year we flew on uh, Southwest. We had to fly out of Tampa. It's very inconvenient. Um, Airtran had changed the schedule. We will be using Airtran on April 24th, mm -hmm. 2010. I will take another 76 World War II vets up to the memorial. Fantastic. And the thing is, this trip is absolutely free of charge to the World War II vet. Cool. We feed them breakfast. We feed them lunch. We feed them dinner. They get special T-shirts, special ball caps. Special fanny packs. Uh, the day have, is theirs. You have chaperones because obviously, if they're a World War II veteran, they've got to be somewhere between the age of what, 85 the, and 95? The youngest is right at 80 years old. Okay. And I had, uh, on my first flight, this was kind of funny, I had five gals with us that were World War II vets. One of them was a retired Air Force colonel who was mm -hmm. in the nurse corps. She was oh. four foot nothing, weighed 85 pounds, and ran <laughs> circles around everybody on that flight. 
I 94 love it. years old. I love 94 it. 94 years old. I love it. I ordered a wheelchair for her and she was going yeah. to smack me. See, now you've got some great <laughs> stories like that, but you also have stories of the guys who sign up and don't make it to the date. Because, yeah. you know, in, because of the age. So we're, what we're doing is Debbie and, and uh, Barry. Debbie is actually the, the uh, car show chairman. Don came out to our show one night. Debbie and Barry brought this information to me and to our, char our uh, charity committee. And the committee voted, yes, let's sponsor a World War II vet for the last flight, which we did. Yes, you and did. And Don came to the show. We presented you with a check. And I said, you know, I said, that's only one, one person we're able to send. So I mentioned we sh probably ought to do a car show. And then I kind of sat back and watched while they pointed over at Debbie and said, hey, Debbie could run that. <laughs> Look at her. Look at her in the corner. Uh -huh. Look at her. Look at her. Yep. Gee, I wish I had that day back. Yeah, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> I'd have been busy that day, Lance. But yeah, she, she said, yeah, I'll do it. And because it, it's a putting on these benefits is kind of a thankless thing. It's a, it's a huge uh, task to take on. There's so much involved with it. But with the help of God and, on, and all the good people that we have out there and the car guys, uh, we'll be able to raise some money and, and be able to help you pack that plane uh, with World War II vets because I think it's a fantastic thing. We do a lot of stuff for kids with cancer and different children's organizations and stuff. Well, how about these guys that fought for us? Mm -hmm. um, this is, to them, to a lot of these guys, I'll bet you it's the, it's the, the biggest thing that they could imagine. The, uh, especially to the ones that The thanks get. that we get, and of course, until November 30th, I was a Charlotte County Veteran Service Officer. Right. And for health reasons, I retired. However, I'm right. expending all my energy now on honor flight. But most of the people that came on my first flight lived in, in the uh, Veteran Service Office area of Port Charlotte. Right. And for months, it, they still come in the office, and they still talk about the and trip. And you commonly get 100 guys on the list, and you can accommodate 75, 76 guys. Yeah. So the more funds you have, the more guys you can bring. That's true. It's and I have simple two, as that. I have 250 people on a waiting list right oh, now. Oh, wow. 250. Well, I Tom, can take 75. Let's see how many we can get. That would be great. And, and for the, the occasion, if you notice the studio, if we want to get a wide shot on it, we, we basically put up, uh, these are blankets, uh, which they can't see because of my guests here. Incoming! <laughs> there you go. See, now we can see them. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Aren't they beautiful? Debbie and Barry are just, they're fantastic with this stuff. Debbie's been sewing all of these and uh, making the blankets out of these and so forth. Uh, they're gorgeous. These are going to be some sort of prizes, whether it be door prize or whatever at, at the uh, show. And uh, I hope that everybody comes out. I hope that everybody participates and we really get a, a good showing out there for you because these, these guys deserve it. And, okay. and on behalf of my staff, I can't thank you and Debbie and Barry and everybody in your organization you enough it. for what you're doing. You got it. Uh, just one more thing. I always end my speeches when I talk to people mm -hmm. with the following. Whatever your station is in life right now, mm -hmm. whether you're self-made or whether you live under a bridge, that's your doing. But you wouldn't be possible without the World War II veterans. That's the truth. That's and the truth. Yeah. That is so true, my friend. Yep. Yeah. Well, see, Don, I figured, you know, <clears throat> one of these days I'm going to be as old as you and I may need help. Uh, you, you might, so. yeah, you know. <laughs> and, and, I can, and I can point you in the right direction, <laughs> man. <laughs> I, I was going to sign up to be a chaperone, and they said, Lance, you need a chaperone. Oh. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> you can't apply for that job. <laughs> All right. We've got with us tonight uh, a film clip from Mr. John Graham. Uh, John 